untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a Sultai colored or black, green and blue sacrifice landfall deck featuring Zimon and Dina as our commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon. The 3 mana 3-4 three says whenever we draw our second card each turn, target opponent loses 2 life and we gain 2 life. You can also tap Zimon and Dina, sacrifice another creature to draw a card, and we may put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped. If we control 8 or more lands, repeat this process once. So Zimon and Dina rewards us for sacrificing small creatures and putting additional lands in place so we quickly get to those 8 lands to double that effect. So I've roughly split up the deck into a few different categories here, starting with some of our sacrifice synergies, which are a smaller part of the deck compared to the landfall synergies, since by playing extra lands and developing our mana, it's going to be a lot easier to replay Zimon and Dina if it gets answered to pay that commander tax, and in general getting to 8 lands in play should be the priority, so I'm not focusing too much on the sacrifice synergies. That being said, I still have a Malachi Rebirth, which can be a fun 1 mana instant, and that can save our commander from removal as it will return to the battlefield. Can also make it so if we sacrifice a creature it returns, maybe re-enabling an enter the battlefield ability, and can also be played as a tap land so it's quite versatile. Then both a Blood Artist as well as a Bastion of Remembrance will help drain the opponent whenever a creature we control dies. The Bastion also making a 1-1 token that we can sacrifice to Zimon and Dina. And then a Deadly Dispute can also sacrifice a creature at instant speed to create a treasure token and draw two cards. So if we cast a Deadly Dispute in the opponent's turn, we'll draw two cards and also get to drain the opponent for two with Zimon and Dina's ability. Maybe after having triggered that ability in our own turn by sacrificing another creature, so that can quickly add up. And then the Morbid Opportunist is also great, since whenever one or more other creatures die, we get to draw a card, and this only triggers once each turn. So we can also potentially sacrifice a creature in the opponent's turn using Zimon and Dina, or maybe do it in our turn and then chum block with a different creature and get to draw two cards per turn cycle with the Opportunist. And then the next category are the sacrifice fodder creatures, or ways to generate creatures we don't mind sacrificing, starting with a Grazer as well as Kami, which is the only alchemy card I'm including here, since it gives us another way of potentially playing Zimon and Dina on turn 2 by putting an extra land in play when they enter the battlefield, and then the Kami can also be channeled to find additional forests in the late game which can be useful, that way we still have lands in hand to put on the battlefield with Zimon and Dina's ability, and then by playing a turn to Zimon and Dina, turn 3, we can sacrifice either Grazer or Kami and already start drawing extra cards and putting lands in play. Then there's Fibblethub the Lost, which draws a card when it enters, similar to Elvish Visionary, although every now and then we can play Fibblethub off the top of our deck and then we get to draw two cards instead. Then there's Jadar, making a decayed zombie token each turn that we can easily sacrifice, can even attack with a zombie token, and then in the end of combat phase, before the decayed trigger makes us sacrifice a zombie, we can sacrifice it to Zimon and Dina, so that's a fun interaction. Reassembling Skeleton we can keep bringing back from the graveyard over and over. Then there's Jolryl as one of the better synergies with Zimon and Dina, saying whenever we draw our second card each turn, create a 2-2 green cat creature token, so that can build up an army, can maybe at first sacrifice the cat tokens until we find better sacrifice fodder, and then eventually we can use the 6 mana ability, saying until end of turn, creatures we control have a base, power and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards in our hand, so that can potentially end the game on the spot. Then a Sylvan Ranger finds any basic land when it enters, and the Elvish Rejuvenator and Springbloom Druid will help us ramp by finding an additional land in the case of Rejuvenator, or in the case of Springbloom, sacrifice a land to find two more. And then at 6 mana, there's a Liliana Dreadhorde General, which we can ramp into pretty quickly. Also could have put this in the first category, saying whenever a creature we control dies, draw a card. So similar to the Opportunist, but it's not limited to once per turn. Then the plus 1 makes a 2-2 zombie token that we can maybe sacrifice, and the minus 4 makes each player sacrifice 2 creatures. And if we ever reach the minus 9 ultimate, we win the game. 
Then there's Belladrosa Witherbloom, 7 mana, 4-4 four, four Flying Dragon, saying at the beginning of each upkeep, including the opponent's upkeep, we get to make a 1-1 one, one Pest token, saying when it dies we gain one life, so great synergy with Zemon and Dina as well, as we can easily sacrifice the Pest tokens, and then we can also pay 10 life to untap all lands we control, can only activate it once each turn, so if we're ramping, putting additional lands in play, gaining life with Dina and the Pest tokens, it's pretty easy to pay the 10 life to double our mana essentially. Then the next category are the ramp cards, or ways to put additional lands in play, maybe a play lands off the top of our deck, including Explore and Grow Spiral. Could also play Into the North if we play some snow-covered basics. Then there's Cultivate at 3 mana, Harrow can sacrifice a land to find two of them and put them on the battlefield untapped, so that's a big deal. Can potentially enable landfall twice as well, same with the uh, Spring Bloom Druid here. Then Augur of Awesome lets us play a lands of the top, and if we have Coven enabled we can also play creatures of the top. Course of Crufix will gain a life whenever land enters, also lets us play a lands of the top. And then Uro to put an additional land in play, similar to Grow Spiral gaining life at the same time. And we can also escape it for 4 mana if we have a full graveyard. And that's also where the fetch lands come in handy, as we'll see later. Oracle of Moldaya lets us play an additional land each turn, and also lets us play a lands of the top. So that's also where the fetch lands and various search effects like Cultivate and Harrow can come in handy, as we get to shuffle our deck and maybe replace the top card of our library. That way we're more likely to find additional lands to put in play with Oracle. And then a Solemn Simulacrum finds a land when it enters and draws a card when it dies. It's also good to sacrifice to Zimon and Dina. Then we've got some of the landfall synergies, starting with a Druid class, gaining a life whenever land enters, and then we can level it up to play additional lands, eventually turning one of our lands into a huge creature. We've got a Lotus Cobra making a mana with landfall. Scoot Swarm can make insect tokens, which we don't mind sacrificing initially, eventually makes copies of itself, so it can quickly reach the token limit of about 200 tokens in this deck, and maybe even a Crash Arena. Then there's Tireless Provisioner, making a food tokens, but more importantly treasure tokens with landfall. We've got Tireless Tracker making clue tokens for additional card draw. Zendikar's Royal makes 2-2 two -two tokens with a land entering. Then we've got Tatiova gaining a life and drawing a card with landfall. And Ancient Green Warden lets us replay lands from the graveyard, so also great with our fetch lands, and also doubles our landfall abilities, which is always nice. And then we've got some general purpose interaction, including Wash Away to counter the opponent's commander for one mana. We've got a few removal spells, including Fatal Push, which we can easily enable in this deck, Heartless Act, Infernal Grasp, and Power Ward Kill at two mana. We've got Reclamation Sage to blow up artifacts and enchantments, and then Sacrifice later. And Binding is also very good, can eventually search up even our Trial Land like Zagoth Triumph here. And then a Calling Ritual, since we're not playing any ramp artifacts ourselves, can also be very effective at blowing up a bunch of cheap trinkets and smaller creatures. There's a River's Rebuke as a one-sided bounce effect, and then Casualties of War can hit multiple card types at once, so it can also be devastating. And then the final miscellaneous category includes the Boots to give our creatures Hexproof and Haste, can be useful when we replay Zimon and Dina to protect it from removal. Got a Black Market Connections and Frexian Arena as additional card draw effects, and we can easily offset the life loss with all the life we're gaining with Zimon and Dina. Then a Tyvar can also make it so we can activate our commander the turn we play it, and can also return some smaller creatures from the graveyard, can even untap Zimon and Dina to activate it twice in one turn cycle. Got a Puppeteer, another reward for drawing two cards in one turn as we get to drain the opponent for two, and when it dies can return something from the graveyard, so it can also maybe let Simone and Dina go to the graveyard, so then when the Puppeteer dies we can return it without having to pay the commander tax. Convert of Worlds also lets us replay a lands from the graveyard, so good with our fetch lands, and can also return some permanents, although then we're limited to casting one spell that turn. And then Eureka Moment can also be cast during the opponent's turn to draw two, put an initial land in play, so it can also enable Zimon and Dina all by itself, which is quite fitting. And then a Time Warp to take an extra turn can be very powerful. We've got Seagate Restoration as a land or a powerful card draw effect, and then Hydroid Crisis can also be a nice mana sink. And then some noteworthy lands in our mana base include Hall of the Storm Giants and Lair of the Hydra as creature lands, so these can be nice mana sinks in the late game, since we don't actually have a ton of expensive cards in the deck otherwise, so these can be a good way to spend mana late game. 
Then we've got our Channel Lands, Sorting CD, Boseju, and Abandoned Mire. Then Calling Garden is one of my favorite lands in this deck, making a plant token when it enters that we can sacrifice. And then a plenty of fetch lands, as we mentioned, even the new Capenna fetch lands, even if they only have one or two colors in common with our commander, are still very good. And the fact that they sacrifice themselves right away when they enter the battlefield means we can immediately find a basic, even if they enter the battlefield tapped. So that's a lot better than your typical fetch lands that would otherwise enter tapped. And then uh, plenty of mana fixing and a few basics as well to make sure we have plenty to search up with our various search effects. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Shieldred. So what do we think of our hand? Seems reasonable. Turn 1 Grazer sets up turn 2 Zimon and Dina. And then uh, Colony Garden gives us more Sacrifice Fodder alongside Rejuvenator. Putting these new Capenna fetch lands in play better than your classic ones, since these get sacrificed right away. And hope our commander survives. Could cast Eureka Moment in the opponent's turn to trigger Zimon and Dina. Disciple, what do we discard? Maybe Rejuvenator over, Garden. In case we picked up another 3-drop we could actually cast. Okay, so now activate Zimon. And then we can put the tapped Garden in play with the ability, maybe draw another land. And Augur could still play a land off the top. Perfect. Okay. So next turn, maybe a Zendikar's Royal, especially if there's a land on top of our deck. Cemetery Tampering to fill the graveyard to enable Shieldred to make sense. And there's a land on top. So now I'm liking Zendikar's Royal, play a land. Could have also kept Buseju to answer the Tampering, doesn't seem all that necessary. And then I may as well activate this now. Okay, get in for two. And Jolrel coming up, another exciting draw. So next turn we can draw a second card main phase using Zemo and Dina, and then Eureka Moment in the opponent's turn to enable it once again to drain for two. Now I might want to keep a Ranger unsacrificed, so we have a non-token creature to sacrifice to Shieldred. Soul Servitude. So I have to sacrifice a non-token creature, and then they can discard a card to conjure a duplicate. Well, probably hang on to Zemo and Dina still. So sequencing here. Start by attacking with the elementals. Bodon takes it. Play Jolrael. And then sacrifice a token. Can put Swamp on the battlefield. And another Swamp. And then Sylvan Ranger get another land, haven't played land from hand yet. And that will set up our Eureka moment. Which we want to cast in the opponent's turn. Okay, so we've got a nice army of tokens, and Jolrel can potentially pump them up. Can sacrifice Ranger to Shieldred, so just hoping to dodge a sweeper. That's fine. And more tokens. Although at this point keeping lands in hand for Jolrel might be better. Opponent seems pretty dead regardless. So yeah, attack all out. Could have cast a Rivers Rebuke. Although activating Jolrel should do it. Then 
that was a decent showcase of all our synergies. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's missing green mana for this early grazer. Facing Yarok, enter the battlefield deck. Yeah, I think we need to mulligan. Okay, this time we have grazer, and we can actually cast a turn to Zimon and Dina with it. Opportunist for card draw, and then Spring Bloom as another creature we can sacrifice. So we'll see how our opponent responds. Hopefully not with removal. So we'd probably start with Opportunist sacking Grazer to draw two cards. But nope. Assassin's Trophy, at least. That one gets us an extra land. So we'll make it easier to replay our commander. Okay, so what's next? Spring Bloom will guarantee an extra land. Eureka Moment's more mana efficient. So probably go for Eureka Moment here. I found a land anyways. Okay, so next turn can try again. Phyrexian Arena. I don't have an answer to it at the moment. So if Zimoan survives, we could go Jolrael plus Opportunist, Sag Grazer, make a token, draw two cards. Uro also very good with Zimoan, can go full control and then uh, sacrifice it while it's still in play. And a Freebooter. Alright, can take our Reverse Rebuke. That's fine. Time Warp's also powerful, although I think we wait to develop our mana a little bit more first. So we'll stick to the plan. Jolrael plus Opportunists. Sag Grazer. And get value from both our creatures right away. Okay, now it's time for Yarok to maybe show up. Uro is also very good with the Opportunists, since we would draw right away. So then we could maybe wait to use Zimon in the opponent's turn, so we get more value from the Opportunist. Boots could protect Zimon. Alright, we've got options. Now might be a decent time to time warp, even though I can't do anything else this turn. If I pick up a land, that wouldn't be so bad, because then I can uh, still play a 2-drop afterwards. Alternatively, Boots equip on Zimon, can play Uro which will give us the second card to drain for two and then activate Zimon in the opponent's turn. Yeah, that seems decent too. So let's play Uro without going full control. Found a land, that's good. And another land, so I could actually still time warp if I wanted to. Don't know if it's necessary. Now I can Play Artists, Boots, Equip. And hopefully Yarok doesn't do too much damage. And then next turn Time Warp should be a bit more effective. Alright, Cultivate's fine. So they won't be doubling any 6-drop here with Yarok. And the Evangel's fine. There we go. Bone gets to draw and discard a bunch. And we get to sacrifice a token. Draw with Opportunist, draw with Zemon, make another token, drain with the Blood Artist. And that way we also can potentially chump Yarok to deny the life gain if they decide to attack. Although I doubt it. Reclamation Sage answers Phyrexian Arena. 
And now we're also in the stage of the game where just activating Jolral could uh, end the game, or at least force the opponent to chum block a bunch. So not hating my position. Opponent's gonna go ahead and sacrifice Evolving Wilds to get it out of the way. Okay, and an Oracle of Moldaios next. So step one might be Time Warp. Could also Oracle see what's on top, then I can still Time Warp. Could also shuffle the top with Harrow, and then I should be pretty likely to still cast a Time Warp afterwards. Sure. Alright, Power Ward kill. So, yeah, I guess I can draw with Zemo and Andina, see what's up. Still maybe play a line of the top before time warping or harrowing. Alright, there's a land. So don't want to put that in play with Zemo's ability because then it's going to be tapped. So I can harrow first and then still maybe see a land on top, making sure to keep up double blue. And there's a land, perfect. And another one. So we got max value. Take our extra turn. No attacks for now. Untap, and yeah, we can just go with an all-out attack here. Opponent's got four blockers, and at least three creatures go through, so with the Joel Ryle's ability that would be game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Thalia and the Gitrog monster. So, gonna want to hang on to our basics as much as possible. At least Zimon and Dina put the land on the battlefield tapped already, so it's not like we miss out on too much. Might want to play Ranger first, or could go for Blood Artist. Doesn't make a huge difference. I'll get a Swamp. And then we could play Abandoned Mire before Thalia and Gidrock come down. Beanstalk's gonna ramp. Could also opt to play Phyrexian Arena instead, which is certainly reasonable. But uh, hopefully we can get the Zimon and Dina engine going. It's gonna be a Weather Seed Treaty instead, so not going for their commander just yet. Okay, Skeleton's nice. So I could play both Artist and Skeleton, sacrifice a Skeleton. Could also try and get the Arena going. And then we'll be able to play Skeleton next turn. That may be better. So we'll attack for one first. Okay, so next turn, Blood Artist into Skeleton, or we could go straight into Liliana. Opponent's got Shield Roots, which, yeah, I guess uh, punishes us for sacrificing main phase. Although now Liliana lines up quite well. Minus four. And a Renan 7 is next. Okay. So we're pulling ahead on cards. Could try and replay Zimon and Dina, still play a 2 drop. That's probably fine. And if they answer it once again, we might have to pivot and try and get some value from uh, Corsair of Crufix, for instance. Could play Jadar, make a zombie. And then next turn maybe sacrifice Skeleton instead, or the zombie token. Could even attack, and then before the Decayed trigger makes us sacrifice a zombie token, we can sack it to Zimon and Dina for maximum value.
Opponents looking at the graveyard. Retrieve gets back Treaty and Shieldred. And a shovel can potentially draw them some cards. Happy to trump with a zombie. Get to draw Liliana. And Zimone triggers. Okay, so no shortage of options here. Liliana's gonna plus. Could play Corsair, see if there's a line on top first. There is not. Can't quite take out Ren unless we're willing to trade for Shovel. So I guess we'll illustrate the uh, the Kate interaction here. But our opponent, of course, can block with Shovel. Get to draw with Liliana. And there's additional lands on top. Repeat the process. Gain more life. And I'll play Connections. Got plenty of life to spare. And we can maybe clean up some creatures next turn. Celestus is fine. And a Shieldred's back. So can sacrifice our token here. So maybe let go of Blood Artist. Don't want to lose Jadar and let the opponent draw with Shovel. Yeah, if we can find a Landfall card here, other than Corsair, we could be in business. Opponent cashes in run to make another Tree Folk. And we'll trump and just uh, let Shovel damage Liliana, that's fine. And drain the opponent, so the synergy here with Zimon and Liliana is awesome. Can keep all these cards in hand. Okay, so Liliana can make a zombie once again. Then we're gonna wanna probably draw the Infernal Grasp. So activate Zimon, maybe sacking the uh, zombie token once again. Which is not going to be attacking. See if there's a line on top we can play with Corsair before playing one from hand. Colony Garden's nice too. Bastion on top can replace our Blood Artist that died. And then Power Word Kill can deal with Shieldred's. Probably want to explore into Bastion here. Provisioner is going to be great too. Can I draw into it? I guess with Deadly Dispute, sacking the token. And then play Provisioner before we play more lands out. Make treasure. Then we're gonna wanna play a land, make another treasure. Bastion seems good. And then we could still play Joel Ryle, which can maybe trigger in the opponent's turn. And then could Infernal Grasp now. Take out Shovel or one of the tree folk here. Let's take out Shovel. That we have to discard fewer cards to hand size. Of course, Skeleton is an easy discard. Okay. 
If our opponent doesn't have a sweeper, they're in trouble. If they do, we get to draw a ton of cards with Liliana. And then Bastion can drain them to death. And a time warp to take an extra turn should seal the deal. Nissa Vital Force can get something back from the graveyard or make a land into a 5-5. Five five. And goes for Farmer. Yeah, our opponent seems pretty dead. Treaty. Could potentially trample one of the tree folk if they started from chapter 3, but just uh, gets another land. And yeah, next turn, especially with the time warp, it should be game. Can play land over the top. Jolryle can also activate, turn my creatures into 10 tens until end of turn. And that does it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Raga Draga, a red green a ramp deck. Our hands got potential, especially if we draw an untapped green source turn one to set up a turn two, Zimon and Dina. But even without it, could work out fine with an Oracle. Alright, so we'll just get a forest here. And then next turn I can play Kami. Fable Passage, a good way to shuffle the deck with Oracle to potentially give us another shot at a land on top. So could play Zimon and Dina, and then next turn try Oracle. And we might see Raga Draga next turn. Okay. So step one, Oracle of Moldaya. See if there's a line on top. There is. Can be untapped. There's another one. So now I can play my Elvish Visionary. And we'll just pass a turn, can maybe chum block and then sacrifice in the opponent's turn. Especially if they try and take out Oracle, I can still get a bit of value. And then uh, Fabled Passage plus Tatiova is also going to be quite nice. Rhythm to give future creatures haste. And we'll sacrifice, doesn't matter too much. Maybe Visionary in case we pick up Tyvar to get it back from the graveyard. And uh, cultivate on top. So go for Tatiova. Maybe start with Fabled Passage in case there's sandbagging removal, although I doubt it. And now we're going off. Okay, so don't mind drawing Colony Garden. Can sacrifice Kami. Um, question is whether I want to play Corsair first or Bastion. Maybe Bastion. Put Garden in play and Seagate Restoration I might just want to cast next turn. Get more value. And still have a Fabled Passage, although with Jolrel coming up, I may not want to shuffle. Jolrel seems to show up in every game so far. Definitely one of our more synergistic cards. Okay, Great Henge, not bad. Three mana left. And no attack. Okay, take our draw step. And Embarrassment of Riches here. Can uh, play Jolrael, could cast Seagate Restoration, go completely crazy. Although this Casualties of War is looking pretty juicy with creature enchantments, artifacts and lands we can destroy. Play a few more fetch lands, time warp. Yeah, I think our opponents has probably seen enough by now. So we can take an extra turn first and then cast the Casualties of War 
And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the first sliver, so it could be sliver tribal. And our hand has potential. Can fetch up an island, although I wouldn't be able to play ranger that way. I guess ranger can get our island. So, just get a forest here. And then Druid class can gain some life. I've got a bit of removal with Binding, and then eventually River's Rebuke. Turn to Arcane Signet from our opponents. And we need to get an Island if we want to play Zemon and Dina next turn. Bolt to take it out. Alright, so now we're potentially missing some Sacrifice fodder, but we still have our Druid at least. So not too worried. Okay, Imposter, so Changeling has all creature types, including Sliver. Could keep up Wash Away for the opponent's commander. Probably just want to play Zemon here. And then we can maybe Binding the Sliver next turn, because the opponent would still get to Cascade anyway, so countering it is not all that amazing. So our opponent does have 5 mana, thanks to Fable Passage. And there's the first sliver. Finding the bears. Okay, that can also eventually take something out with the final chapter. So not what we necessarily wanted to see. So we have options. Probably want to take out the first sliver as soon as possible. And then I guess binding is the best solution for now, since we aren't going to need Wash Away to counter on the way down. Could have also used Binding on the Bears of Lejara, but maybe we can keep the uh, Changelings in check here. Sword to deal with our Zimon and Dina. Well, it's not the end of the world, since they were probably going to take it out with the final chapter anyway. And a Glade Walker, so yeah, plenty of changelings. The Bears of Lijara working quite well with this hand. So we get to find our Triland. Could play Solemn just to ensure an extra land, so next turn we can Rivers Rebuke to bounce a bunch of stuff back since we're not going to need to keep up Wash Away, since our opponent's still stuck on 5. Yeah, that may be best. Could also go with Spring Bloom, but Simulacrum's more mana efficient and lets us draw if they take it out. And I'll get an extra island here in case we need Triple Blue. So Solemn down. And a fetch land. Okay. So by casting rebuke we bounce the signet so we don't have to worry about first sliver for another turn. And I'll play my tapped fetch land. Now the changelings are back to their original size, so they're a bit more manageable. Okay, so what are my options? Probably want to keep up Wash Away if possible, and then could go with a Spring Bloom, and then still have four mana left over. So I guess we could grow Spiral Druid class, start there to gain some life back. Okay, let's pass the turn. And this uh, Kami we can channel for additional forests. 
Pillar of Origin, so no first sliver this turn. So we probably will need to cast Wash Away. And a Helix on Druid. That's acceptable. So the most efficient use of our mana is channeling the Kami. Restoration could be fun too. If I cast it now, I get to draw a ton of cards. And then I guess I'll need to draw a blue source to keep up Wash Away. Yeah, that seems fine. I did not hit the blue source, but we might be able to survive another first sliver here. Play Rejuvenator. I uh, won't have to discard to hand size, so that's not a concern. Yeah, I guess Rejuvenator is fine. Keeps developing our mana. And then next turn we can maybe casualties, blow up land artifact and creature. Sliver finds duress, okay. Goodbye casualties, probably. Well, their opponent's not going to be happy to see what we're working with. Still have a time warp. Now, Bolladros costs 10 life to activate, so even if I chump the 4-2, I wouldn't be able to unless we gain enough life with Druid class. And that could be pretty fun, playing Bolladros and then time warping afterwards. So maybe it is worth chumping here. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, we can play Bellardros and then play a land up to 11, pay 10 to untap all my lands after making some more mana. Then we at the very least get to Time Warp and should be able to take over from there with Zimon making another appearance and then Blood Artist and Opportunist both drawing cards and gaining more life. And then we should be able to control the board with a few removal spells, can counter first liver on the way down. And that does it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Tovalar, red-green werewolves, and our hand seems acceptable. Infernal Grasp giving us some early interaction, which we'll probably need. And then uh, Uro and Solemn, both nice cards to sacrifice to Zimon. Paxong Pup, not an actual werewolf, so we're not forced to main phase or removal to keep it daytime. And Bandits. 3-2 with haste, and this is one of those old-school werewolves. Okay, um, might want to just kill the Paxong pup then, which is going to keep growing over a 3-2 that turns into a 4-3. Sure. And then Zimon can just block the 3-2. And hope it survives here. Well, if our opponent attacks, I'll take it. And then next turn we could go for both Uro and Fibblethip. Immerwolf giving plus one plus one, and then makes it so it's more difficult for werewolves to switch back to their human forms. So we have options here. Could also just play Solemn so I can jump in the opponent's turn and sacrifice. Because then we don't need to tap Zimon in our turn. Even though I miss out on the extra card draw, if we sack Solemn, I would also draw an extra card, which should enable Zimon's ability. Okay, there's Dovalar. And an attack from the bandit. Yeah, we'll uh, jump with Solomon Sackett. Bastion's not a bad one. And then we're also filling the graveyard to maybe escape Uro eventually. So I may not want to get too many swamps, because that's going to make it harder to 
escape. Okay, got a couple options here. Once again, I'm in favor of not tapping Zemo in main phase, which means maybe not going for Uro. Although if we play Uro, at least we get to drain the opponent since we draw, although that's also true for Fibblethip. Yeah, I guess we'll go with Uro and then just not tap Zemo and Dina. See what we draw. Fable Passage, that's a good one. So now I could still cultivate and play Fibblethip, for instance. Okay. And then next turn, hopefully, we can escape Uro. It is gonna switch to Knight here with Tovalar. Stormseeker during Knight is quite powerful, so could be in a bit of trouble. It gives itself Trample and Haste. And we'll block the Alpha. Potter could still give it Trample with Tovalar to still draw a card with it. And that's what he'll do. Okay. Alright, so our opponent gets to draw three cards. We take a ton of damage, but we're setting up for a powerful turn ourselves. A Lotus Cobra can generate more mana. Just need a way to spend all that mana. Okay, so let's say we start with Cobra. And then escape Uro. And leaving Fetchland in the graveyard for potential synergies. Casualties, okay. So take out Tuvalar and a land. And we'll pass it back. Emerwolf keeps it quote unquote nighttime. And a clear shot to take out Zimon and Dina. Okay, so do we want to sack a Lotus Cobra here? Maybe worth it since our hand's not all that exciting. Tyvar could be good. Also gets back Lotus Cobra, lets me activate Zimon and Dina right away. I guess Tyvar was a reason to keep Fibblethip in the graveyard as opposed to Fable Passage. But with a Green Warden having a fetch lands nice. Slasher is 7 6. And I'll block the Alpha if they want to finish off Uro with a burn spell, that's fine by me. Snakeskin, still trade. Okay, so Tyvar, get back Cobra, it's probably step one. Jolrael, could be better. Get back Jolrael, play Zimon and Dina, can still play a Rejuvenator and keep going. And generate a nice board presence. Can even re-escape Uro if we wanted to. Yeah, let's go with Rejuvenator. Finding a Colony Garden, that's nice. 
and then I can save Uro for next turn. For now, go Bastion, Zemon and Dina, sacrifice the Colony Garden token to enable Jolrael right now. And gain some life back. Okay. Artist could also be useful. So we're slowly inching back into the game. Although Tovalar's Huntmaster with haste here is going to be quite scary. Luckily not a pack leader. Could have been bad. So now if I take it, would be 13. It's probably acceptable since I don't want to block the Trampler and this one I can't take out easily without losing Jolrile. Okay, and now Tyvar can also untap Zemon and Dina for what it's worth. If I activate Jolrile, I could first escape Uro, and then turn all my creatures into 5 5 Spoon's got three blockers. That might just do it here. But let's start here. Get to draw. Then can use the Monandina, sacrificing the token. Maybe after playing Blood Artist, not sure if it matters. Probably better off having more cards in hand for Jolrel. And then use Tyvar to untap. And then now Fatal Push is enabled. Kill this Immer Wolf that's being kind of annoying. And attack all out. And that should seal the deal here. Alright, so a very close game against the werewolves. All the way down to one life. But we eventually managed to stabilize in big part thanks to Uro. So yeah, we got to see our Zemon and Dina landfall sacrifice deck in action. And there's a lot of ways you can approach the deck. There's a ton of cards you can include all the way from the sacrifice synergies to the landfall synergies. Personally, I think the landfall synergies are a little bit more powerful in Historic Brawl. So I would aim for like maybe 10 to 20% sacrifice synergies and make the rest more about landfall and putting additional lands in play, which also makes it easier to replay your commander if it gets answered. So overall, this seems like a medium power level commander it's definitely going to hold its own against a lot of decks but it's also not one of these overpowered commanders that's going to end up in the hell queue facing Ragavan and Teferi on the regular which is probably a good thing so that's going to do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd Thank you.